Welcome to the Rebel Love Show. We are once a week broadcast from Manchester, New Hampshire, where we are pro pots, pro gun, and pro coffee. You can find all of our contents, well, one day again on rebelloveshow.com. Uh, you can also go find us on iTunes and Stitcher. I am Ron Mathias. And I am Shire Dude. And we have two guests today. Our first guest is uh, Neil Connor. Hey, what's I up? I don't know how many <laughs> you do. So you're in, you're in like everything. Am so, I? Yeah, I don't know. You're in a lot. Well, okay. why don't you list what everything you do? <laughs> I, I get people coming up to me at Porkfest and Liberty Forum saying, hey, I saw you on that Ridley Report video from like 2007 <laughs> or 2006 or something. What so, were you doing so. on Ridley Report? Uh, open caring and then having the cops accost me and run my serial numbers and hold me at gunpoint. That's intense. Oh. Yeah. You know, I've never actually been on any Ridley report ever. I almost feel left out about it. I don't even know if he's doing any. He still does yeah. videos, but he just like goes to like, uh, um, like city council meetings like everywhere around the state. And that seems like all he does now. I don't know. And we have uh, Zach Harvey of uh, Lama Sioux. Hello. Hello, uh, and uh, Zach, how long you've uh, how long you been in the Shire? Two thousand late two thousand eleven, so about three and a half years. And how many Shire years is that, yeah. Rob? Like the I'm doing the math in my head as he's saying that. <laughs> I, I want to say that's roughly depending on how how you live in the Shire. That has to be at least six to nine years. I would say six, maybe for you, because shire years are so jammed. So it's like a, like a dinosaur. They go faster. Yeah, yeah. Like I've been here almost going on six shire years now. Oh, yeah. That's a long yeah, time. I know. It's been a very, very long time. <laughs> I can barely remember. But the years go by quickly. They do. They. It, I mean, pork fest will be here in one shire year. Right. Oh, yeah. it's coming up. Make it like that. Yeah. So, anyways. Uh, let's do a little bit of a recap from uh, previous shows and shows before that and whatnot. This happened in January, right? Is yeah, it happened in January. Oh, yeah. before we get started, though, you can see our beautiful faces at ShireDude.com. That's where the live cam uh, feed is going. You just got to scroll, scroll all the way down. We're temporarily at ShireDude.com. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, long story. Uh, basically... Over a Shire a year ago, I was uh, detained for a little bit, and I made like a, I, I video re uh, record every time I'm pulled over because I'm literally pulled over once a month, if not more. The only reason why I haven't been pulled over this month is because I've been carless because I got in a car accident right before Liberty Forum, which has yet to well. be fixed yet. Otherwise, I probably would have a being pulled over story for this month, but I don't. <laughs> um, <laughs> But uh, basically, I recorded a police officer here in Manch, right in front of our studio, no less. Um, basically, me talking to him for over 10 minutes, asking, you know, do you feel comfortable sleeping at night knowing you're stealing from me over a sticker on my windshield? Right. And it was an inspection sticker. In ticket. a blizzard, mind you. Right. It was, I, I, I enjoyed the video. It's a, so, it's a crazy video. Got a lot of views on, on Freaking. Yeah. Just, just like cops have ticket quotas, you have a quota for how, uh, many, how many times you can get pulled over with them. Well, it's not just that. It's how <laughs> many, it's how many, uh, I have a quota per year of how often I have to videotape uh, cops. Just like they have a quota of how many times I have to steal from people. I have a quota of how many times I have to videotape police officers. So I, I got my quota, I got my fill in way more than I wanted to uh, last year. So this year I kind of have to catch up. So that, that one did a lot of it. Um, but uh, anyways, I was given a ticket, uh, decided to fight in court. So we uh, go to court. Um, this is more like Intel retail, Intel for us? Yeah, Intel, like scoping out the joint. It is really interesting because I, I had never been in the court before. And so I got to see like the whole process of, of what you do when you challenge a ticket. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That, I mean, we block. Well, what do you do? Well, you have to go through the security check, right? You, you're not allowed to have uh, weapons in the courthouse. Right. Yeah, somehow uh, the Second Amendment doesn't apply unless in the place cop, where the yeah. Second Amendment is Because it's their private defended. public property. <laughs> yeah, some, some weird, you know, quasi-magical you know, thing that happens when you go through the threshold of, like, their doorway. I don't know. Um, and unless you're on the pre-approved list of media outlets, you can't have a camera in anywhere in there. Yeah. Or, or at least you can't be filming. I actually had a camera, and it was just in my pocket, and they said that was okay. Yeah, <laughs> which is really weird. Though apparently, if you're not pressed, you can get some sort of like, you know, permission, permission slip. slip. Yeah, but if you already have like the master permission slip, you don't have to keep filling it out. So we found out the, that also that we because we were 
who represent Free Keen blogging for them. Right, we're both Free Keen bloggers, so yeah. we can have cameras. So, yeah, we can go to any courthouse in uh, New Hampshire mm -hmm. and record just saying we're Free Keen. The head of security there was like, oh, yeah, I know Free Keen. Free Keen's been in here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's before what if, my time, even. Yeah. What, if, what if the permission slip was signed by your mom? Is, is that admissible? <laughs> no, I That's like the best. If your mom is Noam Freeman, yeah. You can say no to mom. <laughs> Or I can just write myself a permission slip. I give myself the permission to do this. I do what I want. Yeah, I do what <laughs> I want. Yeah. So uh, anyways, went to court, went to some pre-trial hearing, didn't say a word, handed, the, handed them, uh, and I'll probably get some slack for this because I'm not, okay, here's the thing. I am not a right to travel activist. I hate doing that. But at the same time, I'm going to fight a ticket. Every ticket I get, I'm going to fight it. Oh, I did that. I, I was the right to travel guy, um, oh. but it was uh, in one of those pre-trial conferences. So they have a before trial trial with the prosecutor just to make sure you're not wasting the judge's time. Yeah. Um, and so once you go through that, uh, what I did was, of course, ask a series of questions about During being able to travel freely, et cetera, et cetera. So they, they knew my defense before going into the courtroom, and then they just they they blew up they said oh you're not some free man on the land you're not some sovereign individual you can't just go about society making your own rules and yada 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 but we see you've gone through the paperwork and you've gotten your registration sticker and everything's in order now so all right we'll let you off with the warning hmm no that's pretty much what they did they uh, i basically handed them my uh, my inspection I did get it inspected. I figured forty dollars is better than one hundred and forty dollars, and actually being able to, you know, travel. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, because they would not stop, I would just keep being pulled over, over and over until they finally stole the car and kidnapped me. You know, um, but they threw out the ticket because I don't, I don't owe sixty some dollars. So I had a whole defense in my mind of like what I was going to say. He was ready to go to trial. Yeah, like we were talking, we were planning what he was going to do sticker. at his trial and everything. Yeah, yeah what I was going to wear. Like I had a whole idea of like advertisement with, uh, yeah. Should I say that in there? Or no, we'll save that for like the actual well, trial. Well, definitely with a cape. No, I can't have <laughs> okay. a cape. We did wear hats in solidarity with, uh, with Keniacs though. We both wore hats into the courtroom and kept what them if on you just, time. What if you're just a cape wearing man? A cape wearing man? There are cape wearing men. That's totally acceptable in high society, right? Yeah. No. Capes? Oh. Capes? Yeah. <laughs> sure. Capes used to be a thing. Capes. Yeah, used to be. If anyone's gonna bring capes back well, in Manchester, it's gonna be it's gonna be Zach here. Yeah. Yeah. You gonna bring it back? Sure. All right. <laughs> Why shouldn't I? Well, you should you should bring it back at the uh, at Pork Fest, the get, uh, big gay dance party. Was so our... wearing a cape then, just don't stop wearing a cape. Just go there with a speedo and a cape. First of all, and I everyone will know you for that cape. All right. I'm not sure capes are gay, but I'm not saying it is gay. It's just mm. dramatic. Yeah. I see. I, I, I Brian Neal's day what I said. So that. you're saying that dramatic is gay? No. No, dramatic's dramatic. I'm saying the party is gay. I don't say you have to wear your cape is the gay. The party is also dramatic. I yeah, think that's what it's gay. over yeah. the top. But what if I want to wear the cape all the time? Then I wouldn't judge you for it. We'd probably hang out more often. Yeah, <laughs> you probably would fit in the studio more often. If you capes are awesome. Yeah. Capes are awesome. I think the last guy to wear one was uh, Anton Sander Levey from the Church of Satan. Wow. Um, I don't think I've seen anyone wear one since. Someone was wearing a Free State Project flag as a cape. I don't know if that counts. They were doing it during cop blocking. I remember that. Really? Yeah, 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 yeah. Where? Oh. Here or was that in Keene? I want to say it was here in Manch. This is how to win minds and uh, <laughs> win hearts and minds in the Shire is you, you wear a Free State Project campaign. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Nothing so, puts you on the margins of society. We're already on the fringe as oh, it is, man. Might as well have a fringe on that Nothing cape. to be ashamed about. That's we're, true. We're cape wearing, folks. More of fringe society when we get back. I'm trying to go Mm -hmm. I like you that. can see all of us. Oh, that's not. Oh, this one. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. And there's two of you. Uh, two of me? No, there's two of me on the screen. It just oh, looks okay. weird. It looks like I'm sitting back to myself. <laughs> maybe you are. It looks like I'm like this. Whoa, man. Being but maybe you are. To myself, which is just really trippy and weird. Arms.
Oh yeah, lean it, lean back against yourself. Yeah, there you go. There we go. <laughs> okay. That's, That's insane. Hmm. We gotta get a studio clock, man. I know. We really do need a studio clock. Sit here on edge. <laughs> on edge. How about a studio fire alarm? <laughs> oh, yeah, we were, I kept... I, it kind of seems like beeped too much, and then somebody's just like... Someone just got lost. Yeah. Yeah. No, the, pro the problem How often was... are you cooking in here? No, it's, uh, normally it never went off, but it started going off when we'd smoke a blunt to the point where, okay, we're smoking in here, which we normally do, so I just... I didn't rip it off. I actually went up there to turn it off. And it fell? No, and then left it up there. Then it started hanging down. It and was then, hanging by the cord. And then I remember, no, no, no. Ann oh. Ann uh, burnt something in the kitchen, and it started going off. So I think she hit it with the broom until it fell well, off. That's what it's for, though. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Remembered how to say clock in German, so I got excited. Guys, ooh. Ooh. Clock in Welcome back to the Rebel Love Show, and uh, I kind of want to open up with uh, Zach's backstory because everyone here ever come. And anytime a, a guest first comes on the show, they kind of tell their back of how they got here. And then I usually don't touch it afterwards, but I'm always kind of curious of how uh, they got here, how they arrived in the Shire, and all that jazz. Um, so, like, how, I know you're from Israel, but how did you discover this? How did you end up living in uh, Manch? All right. Well, my brother. Josh and myself, we had a business in, in Tel Aviv, Israel, and it was a uh, small boutique guitar shop, a pretty cool guitar store um, in South Tel Aviv, and we were just running running the business. We weren't even libertarian necessarily at the, par at the time, although pro-free market in general, um, and it was just the bureaucracy that that drove us against the state, so the, the kind of like the day-to-day the, the -day issues, and we started to think, wow, you know, what do they have against us that's so personal that they're screwing us over? And then eventually over time we realized they were doing this to everyone. And that was kind of like a shock moment. Like, what, does everybody suffer like this? Anybody that tries to open a business? Um, so that was the next, like, five, six years. And then eventually um, we got fed up. But we had heard about the, um, we both had heard about Ron Paul and then later the Free State Project, um, probably around 2000. In eight two thousand and nine, how I did you say. how did you hear about it? Um, I actually heard about it from Josh, my brother, and um, and he just learned about it from the internet. And there was a very small libertarian community in Israel back then, about four people. Um, and now it's actually a lot bigger. It's grown a, a ton since then, even since we left in two thousand and eleven. Um, but it was just kind of one of those moments where you're like, that's it, I'm fed up, I'm out of here. And it's like, where do you go? So you, you kind of look at the globe, and you're like, well, where do I go? And uh, added everything up, New Hampshire was the coolest place in the world, so we moved here. <laughs> wow. What was the, uh, what was like the first thing of the FSP that you like remember? Like, what was it like, what, was it an article? Was it like a video? Like what, like a, a blog Instagram post? photo. An Instagram photo. Well, it was the crazy idea of, of, of you know that, you know, there are, everybody around you is, is socialist and it's really hard to get the idea, ideas across and eventually you kind of feel a little crazy it's like okay it's, it's only me that has these ideas and then you hear about this magical place where not everybody thinks you're crazy and there's actually a community of people who realize that there's more to the world than than the state um, and that you know the, the solutions don't necessarily have to come from the state and so you're kind of pulled to that bus, and then you're like, wait. And it just happens to be that this place has no income tax, no sales tax, and it's it's pretty libertarian overall. I mean, you're not going to find a lot of places in the world more libertarian than New Hampshire, even as it is right at the moment. Yeah. Um, so we both kind of came here in October 2011 and then went back, packed ourselves, and moved here two months later. <laughs> yeah, it didn't take long after. Not Did you really. come here for like an event or something? You no, not there? at all. We just met with a few people, a few nice. really cool people, um, in, including the Vines, if you're familiar with them, and Eric Voorhees, and some other people that moved back 
um, before we even got there. Um, and it was just kind of the, the concept that we were sold on. And you guys were responsible for the Manchester Bitcoin meetup, right? Yes. Yeah, that, so that was right after that. the 2012 Pork Fest. And then we started that, you know, that was in June. So in July 2012, we started the, the Bitcoin meetup. And that's, that was, was at a time when there weren't a lot of Bitcoin meetups. I believe it's the long, world's longest running. Yes, Bitcoin it is. Meetup. Yeah. Yeah. Weekly, every week, nonstop. every single week, nonstop since two thousand July. Even 2012. during Pork Fest, it happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think they do. Yeah, the yeah, last I Pork Fest. It. Yeah, I went to it. There, there was only was like nine of us there, but I bought some Bitcoin and there, that, so that it was, was a Bitcoin meetup at Pork Fest, and then they did it again, or they did it at the same time at Strange Brew, uh, as far as I know. I think they might have done it that Sunday night with a couple of people that went back early or made it back yeah. at that time. Yeah. But I know we actually had a meetup earlier in the week, like on a Friday morning or no Friday afternoon or something like <laughs> that. We we decided to have like some sort of Bitcoin meetup. Uh, right. And it was everyone that was there was people that normally go to that meetup. Yeah. It's huge. Uh, the last one you went to, Rob, you said there were a bunch of new movers there. Yes, there was um, I w- the one that we went to on uh, Sunday at Strange Brew. There was uh, a whole table of new movers. Wow. Yeah. And there and are th- you sure they weren't just I don't <laughs> know people what? from New Hampshire? <laughs> <laughs> I wish that was the case. Sometimes that's true, but that no, that wasn't right. the case in this situation. So new movers. New movers. And um it was fascinating because uh two of them were from uh from Brazil. Wow. So three of them are they're speaking Portuguese <laughs> and, and really? across from each other and I'm like what is going on? Where am I? Like this, <laughs> you know, it's uh, it was crazy though. There's all you know that all these Brazilians are just like sitting right here at this table, mm-hmm. and it was fascinating to see like a whole like Brazilian entourage like, like at a Bitcoin meetup <laughs> in Manchester, New Hampshire. Well, I can teach you some some Portuguese if you'd like. I need to learn. I don't want to learn Portuguese. Wow, you know, no, honestly, I, I probably should learn Portuguese. Tudo bem. What was that one? That was well, Olá's hello. Okay. <laughs> and tudo bem is is everything cool? Is everything good? Oh, no. there you go. How many languages do you speak? I don't speak Portuguese. <laughs> <laughs> I know I can read the menu and and po- I, I, you know we uh, all of uh, the machines we create are manufactured in Portugal, so we're there a few right. times a year. So I'm really good at reading the menus, and the food is amazing. So I can read the menus and I can ask people how they're doing. I definitely do not speak Portuguese. Where can I find a Lamasu machine that is in Klingon? Um, you can <laughs> buy one, <laughs> and Neil will help you set it up with Klingon. <laughs> nice. Do you remember that? I posted yes. it on my Facebook. I do remember that. Um, That's why I brought it up. Uh, what I uh, what I didn't mention on that post was that I had tried for an hour to get Klingon fonts to work on the machine. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but that wasn't billable time. That was. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's what he does in his free time. Uh, so, uh, in, I don't know if I put Neil, I don't know if I put you in this group chat, but I know Zach was in it. I think I might have. Um, but uh, there was a, uh, a Pizza 911 chat to get uh, Pizza 911 to accept Bitcoin, and Zach was in that. Um, and then now, uh, Shire Dude, you've, uh, and they accept Bitcoin now. Now, uh, Shire, do you want to tell a story about uh, the next business we're trying to get uh, to accept Bitcoin? Right. Okay, yeah. Actually, it actually follows from. The Literally, first, the, the first segment. Story in the first be- yeah. segment. We were talking about coming to the courthouse. Uh, when we were walking out of the courthouse, um, Rob needed to pick something up, so we went into a store called Forbidden Fruit. There happens to be a sex oh. shop right across the street from that the... Uh, from yeah. Yep. yeah. Right. right. And so it's from the courthouse. Yeah. Well, more importantly, right next to uh, Consuelos. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not a the fan taco, of Consuelos. Yeah. What? Yeah. Not I still have they don't I give love you them. enough chips. They give you like three chips. <laughs> they don't want you to get fat. <laughs> they're very considerate. I'm so glad they're they're looking out for me. Martin is the man. I don't know. You're I, he is. Oh. He's a good guy. Do they accept Bitcoin though? Not yet. <sighs> we need to get on that. Are you t- are you guys tired of that yet? Are you tired of sitting at a restaurant and like begging the waiter to take Bitcoin or at least trying to bring it up? I I Do you generally up? don't beg. Yeah. Well, you shouldn't. <sighs> I don't know. I, I mean, I, it's you know, give people time. Not well, everybody had a website in 1995. Well, well hopefully this changes because I showed a moment of solidarity, and we'll talk about that when we get back. <laughs> Thank you.
I have uh, two stock questions whenever I'm in a establishment. Uh, can I pay in Bitcoin? And when I get carded, uh, what if I don't believe in government ID? I've heard that one. Oh, as, nice. as I've my, seen people's faces when you ask, too. It's my little protest. Like, you know, <laughs> see, you know what sucks well, is I do a job that? where I have to see every every customer I have, I have to see their ID. Like yep. 90% of every customers that I, I take in, I have to look at their ID. That sucks. It yeah. does. It really sucks. So I was watching this um, this Vice TV show. Um, That's a good I, show, not Vice. TV show. Vice, uh, they have their video series, and yeah. this one was about e-games. So oh, I saw that, that where there's a, there's in South Korea there is video game rehab. So right, yeah. yeah, with like shock treatment, it's horrible. Yeah, but and one it's, it's state sponsored too. But one of the things, one of the um, one of the st statists in the parliament wanted to do is create a law that you have to put in your, or maybe that I even passed, that you have to put in your ID, your national ID, when you sign up for these games. These online video these games. These online video games. And at 12, they call it the Cinderella, Cinderella Act. And at 12, it just shuts it off. For anyone under age. Under age. Under like 16 or 18. Or so whatever. they're not up. What? Now, they do have like crazy amount of people that are addicted to video games. But nonetheless, uh, it's kind of crazy. Rob have to justifying I'm not justifying violence? it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not justifying the violence. But they ha do have an epidemic, but that's not the solution. Oh, yeah. Well, they use a VPN. Okay, so I talked to this with, with... I'm sure a lot of them do use a VPN. Here's the thing. Why are people addicted to the internet? It's liberating from their yeah. otherwise... What are they perhaps? doing instead of the internet? That is better than the internet. The internet connects you to the entire universe with unending information and, and stimulation. And then you yeah. go back to real life and what is it? You have to do your homework? <laughs> go to school? Yeah. I mean, what what else are you supposed to read? A, you know, read a book? Yeah. What else are you... You know, what are you living for? And so these people, obviously, they're addicted because they feel that they're nothing in life. And then online, they can be whatever they want to be. So it, it's kind of like it's, you're forcing people off the internet without offering them anything better. It, just kinda, it almost seems kind of silly. It's cruel. Yeah. It is. School is cruel. This is true. Yeah, that's pretty gross. I don't know. They could hit me up. Yeah, I know. Well, they don't... Not if they shut them off at 12. What time is that? What time is midnight, uh, actually? We should just oh, tell wait, the entire country of... Should you we know, just... I've, uh, not at age 12, no. Yeah. It's at, at midnight. Oh, okay. I, I wasn't also proposing that age 12 people <laughs> would hit me up. <laughs> just, just the fact that they're in South Korea, is that is that it? That they should yeah, hit you up? Okay. I saw, yeah. The South Koreans. Yeah, we need love them. Yeah. What? Um, they're, they're dramas, especially. I haven't seen anything. What? I haven't seen any dramas. There's a whole segment of uh, the American populace that are just absolutely addicted to uh, Korean drama shows. Really? Um, there are like uh, streaming services where you pay monthly just to watch Korean dramas. Um, and with English in subtitles? With English subtitles, yeah. All right, what are we talking about next? Oh, Forbidden Fruit. That's right. Forbidden Dude, Fruit. They're so formulaic. Like it's uh, it's but, mostly um, what I what I kind of like though is it's almost like a society without any jocks, so they can do whatever they want to and not feel ashamed. Like in the U.S., like a, a stadium filled with people looking at a game, they just get bullied out of school before they ever got to a stadium. It's like no, this is football. Welcome back to the Rebel Love Show, and uh, we're talking about sex shops and uh, courthouses, right? Is that what we left right. off? Right. Yeah, we walked out of the courthouse and into the sex shop. Yeah. And, and then, then mind oh, you, it was a moment. Courthouse, courthouses, and court sex shops. Court, court <laughs> house. Oh. Okay. Sex courts and uh, you know, rock and roll. Yeah, shop <laughs> courts. I don't know. Uh, anyways, there was a moment. I had a moment of solidarity. Correct. Right. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead and tell that story. No, no, no. Well, all right. Long story <laughs> short, 
uh, it was crazy because these two women walk out of the sex shop, and they're actually in the same courthouse, that uh, same courtroom that we were in. And it's a convenient location. Like yeah, I it's understand. Really convenient. Yeah. yeah. Maybe it's like a tour of Manchester. <laughs> <laughs> Go to court, buy buy a dildo. That's just you know, it's your uh, well, I understand. Experience. You got out your 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 ticket. You wanted to celebrate, so you go to the sex shop. Right. Yeah. 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 Apparently, <laughs> you know. And uh, so, anyways, uh, these women come out, and all of a sudden, uh, this tall black guy with like huge earrings like comes out after uh, bald guy. Uh, comes out uh, screaming uh, at the women, saying how, uh, um, like, I'm not, you know, I am a faggot. You, you just did a race, uh, what, what, no, hate, a, crime. hate crime, hate, hate crime, crime, blah, blah, blah. And they're, like, screaming at each other. Yeah. And they're just calling him gay and left and right. And I'm like, you know what? Now is a good time to buy some lube. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, like, a moment to support this, like, shop owner, I'm like, I walked in. Right, he denied service to someone. I think business owners should be able to deny yeah. service to someone who's being rude to them. Exactly. Absolutely. Kick, you know, he kicked him out. I'm like, you know what? Good for you. Like, standing you know, standing up for uh, what you believe in, blah, blah, blah. You know, like, as a libertarian, we... You know, it's one of those things where, you know, we actually believe that business owners have the right to discriminate if they want to, you know, especially if it's for the right reasons and blah, blah, blah. I don't know about you guys, but I'm okay with, like, as a business owner, if I don't want to do business with someone, I'm not going to be, I don't feel like I should be forced to do business with someone. Yeah. So I'm supporting this guy, and, you know, and all that jazz. Um, and uh, and that's where uh, Bitcoin came in. Right. Like, we were... Uh, we were looking for cash, and like he didn't take the card that I had, and he didn't take. Yeah, he didn't take your. And then we asked him about card. Bitcoin, just like inevitably, because that you I know. didn't have enough cash. They upped the price on lube. Would you believe this shit? <laughs> <laughs> I can't even let a guy lube anymore. I know <laughs> they upped it by like five bucks. I like I couldn't believe it. It's hard Wait, times out yeah. there. Yeah, you don't get industrial. <laughs> it's harder <Yeah>. without lube. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hard, it is. Itchy times. Me. Yeah, go on. <laughs> you don't get the uh, industrial like 200 gallon drum uh, <laughs> off of Amazon.com, which you can get a, a gift.com Bitcoin gift card for. No, you can buy lube with Bitcoin. I you can not. buy that's anything not the food the grade world. stuff though. <laughs> <laughs> what is, is that like food machine grade stuff? That's oh well. That's you want your lube oil. to be food grade, don't you? No, that I, what? <laughs> oh, food grade like Cook you can eat it. it. Oh, like you. Can you can power your car. <laughs> okay. No. Wow. Anyways. These are probably all things you could do with hemp. I just got the idea for like lube bulletproof coffee just out of nowhere. I don't know if anyone's thought of that yet. I'm throwing that out in the ether. You guys use that. I'm not going to use it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you just, want, you, you, it just want, you just want hard bulletproof <laughs> coffee. Uh, I understand. Leave that to gravity. <laughs> okay. But yeah, we had the moment of solidarity with yeah. the guy. You bought the lube. We talked about Bitcoin for actually a, a while because there's no one in the shop. It's yeah. Just us. Okay. Yeah, and I told him like because well, I didn't have enough. He's chasing everyone no, out. I didn't have enough. <laughs> I didn't have enough uh, fiat currency on me. Right. All right. So I was. I didn't have that much cash on me, uh, which was only like you know ten bucks at the time. I don't know. I didn't. I, I. No. The night before. The night before, I I bought some Bitcoin from someone who was at a comedy uh, oh, oh, event. That guy. That guy. Yeah. Yeah. You know who I'm talking about. Oh yeah. Yeah. Mr. Bitcoin. Yeah. Making it rain. Yeah. At at a, at a, the improv thing that. Uh, a Bruno set up. So, anywho, uh, so I was cashless basically uh, that next day, and uh, I'm telling him, like, no, I'll buy, I'll pay for full. I just, you know, I don't have enough money. You know, I would gladly pay you the full amount in Bitcoin, and that that, that opened up this whole huge conversation what Bitcoin is. And given the demographic, you should have just called it Buttcoin the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's actually, actually a Buttcoin website, so that might have been confusing. Yes, yeah. that's true, and I mean, and it's something else. <laughs> I don't think I've ever been to buttcoin.com or is there a buttcoin.com or is it dot it's info? It's a subreddit. <laughs> yeah. Oh, makes, it's a subreddit. Okay. Makes fun of r slash Bitcoin all the time. That's great. Yeah. I wow. love parodies. There's like, a parody of Bitcoin Reddit. Yes. Really? Yes. Wow. <laughs> like who spends so much time doing parodies of uh, a Bitcoin thread uh, Reddit? Like Redditors. Redditors. Okay. Reddit turds? Reddit turds. <laughs> Redditors. So, uh, Sounds Shire, like predators. So Shire do. Or what, Redditors. What, uh, what happened with this uh, this business manager? Well, yeah, I was able to put him in a chat with some of the, the best minds is bit in Bitcoin, as I put it. 
Uh, yeah, I put him in a chat with uh, Zach and I think Neil too. I think I put no. Did oh, I not really? put no? I should have. We should. Oh, Neil is an expert. Now I feel terrible. The, the, the only thing is, I didn't want to put him in the chat with like ten people. You know, I just I chose like the three or four. Because then you put him in chat with 10 people, he gets a bunch of notifications. He's like, oh, Bitcoin is just spam, and he doesn't want to do it. But anyway, um, and it's, you know, we'll see what happens with it. I'll, I should go back and talk to him, maybe remind him. You should. Yeah, follow up. Yeah, you added him on Facebook, didn't you? I Actually, I've added multiple business owners in Manchester on Facebook. Because that way, every now and then, I could message them like, oh, this is a cool uh, Bitcoin introductory mm -hmm. video or something. Does he do, does he do online sales? I'm um, mm. not sure. I'd get to check that out. Because Bitcoin's really good for online sales as well. And then if he does get any publicity outside of the Shire, people can just buy using Bitcoin, whatever he's selling. Yeah. It'd be huge. Ha yeah. Have a pizza delivered three states away? I think I don't think we're talking about the pizza right now. <laughs> no, we're talking about oh, the sex shop. You can have pizza delivered oh, a couple okay. blocks away Although, with Bitcoin now. Even though it's from a cop theme. But nonetheless, you can still have it delivered. Pizza 911. Yeah. True. I got to go there. Do deliveries yeah. work with Bitcoin as well? Because I remember. The driver even takes tips in Bitcoin. Oh, wow. Most nice. impressive. Yeah. I, I was very impressed when he, they brought pizza That's over. That's pretty cool. Yeah. You know, yeah. And is it every driver knows how to do that? I don't That I don't know. It could have been a special or you, thing. Right. You, maybe you no just idea. say when you want to buy it, I want to pay with Bitcoin. That's true. I haven't uh, mystery shopped them yet. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get paid to do that. Um, One of the greatest feelings is vindication so i used to work for um, microsoft in the um, store in salem and i would just talk to my coworkers all day long about bitcoin and show them the latest price and try and get them on board and um uh, one of my uh, uh superiors actually uh, bought bitcoin off of me and we had to like hide the cash transaction so the cameras didn't see oh. where did you hide it Cause <laughs> 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 under closed palms uh but I was vindicated when Microsoft started taking Bitcoin. Yeah, uh, uh, Xbox Live mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. what what else are they taking Bitcoin for? Or is that like all their services? Uh, they're like online digital content. So anything you could like purchase from the um, Windows Store, you can get a gift card for for Bitcoin. Okay, so it's a step. Oh yeah, yeah, no, that's, that's huge. I mean, it's no uh, Google or Amazon or anything like that, but. That's definitely a step in the right direction, for sure. So, yeah. speaking of uh, hidden transactions, you two, uh, Rob and Neil, you you talk a lot on uh, encrypted messaging, right? No, not you yet. Don't? But we should. You you I have don't? each other on. Everyone there, right? should. Yeah. Everyone should. I know. You don't chat with each other on encrypted. No, but I there's so don't. many good tools. Hey, okay, here's my question. I use a lot of group chats. Mm -hmm. Is there any? Any way to encrypt uh, Facebook group like chat, fa like uh, it's like a fa or Facebook group chats or something like Facebook uh, but group chats, like a multiple chat window. Um, like I use Tech Secure and you know I'll, I'll Glyph, uh, Crypto Cat, Crypto Cat. Is Glyph still a thing? <laughs> yeah, do people still use Glyph? I, what, is, what is Crypto Cat too? Crypto Cat is uh, it's an encrypted chat that you just it's like a it's a Chrome plugin. Okay. So you anybody that's using Chrome can use it. Okay, here's the thing. 9% of the time, I'm on this. I'm on my phone. I'm okay. on my smartphone. Is there anything I can do group chats with on this that's encrypted? Hmm. I'm not what? lugging this around when I'm at work, people. I'm not lugging my laptop around. You got a little ways to go. With our PC. Well, I guess I'll keep being uh, better. That are, the um, encryption that are a lot more <clears throat> secure than say Google Hangout or Skype. Yeah. And there's one is called Talkie.io, and then uh, Firefox came out with one called Hello, and uh, there are like a couple more. But basically, what it does is instead of going through a centralized server such as Skype goes through Microsoft and Google Hangout goes through Google, it just it's encrypted from one computer to the other, and it's direct. So there's no one in between. So it's one browser to another. Yeah, I was looking into Hello, and all you have to do is down? send someone a link, and they could be on any browser it's already down, dude. as long as it can. Same with the talkie.io. Right. It's oh. really cool. I've used nice. it a few times. I even talked to my parents in Israel on talkie. 
that IO oh, really? people. How to That's do that? Because cool. they always ask us all kinds of questions we don't want to answer on Skype, and we still don't want to answer them. But I d- I like tried what? to start my parents on uh, encrypted conversations because I was sending Thanks. uh, I sent my father a phone, mm-hmm. so I put um cyanogen mod on it. I put red phone. I put tech here, <laughs> and he's having to enter all these passwords and is trying to call other people. It was just a whole mess. Yeah. It led to so much tech support <coughs> that I'm like, nope, just flash it. Wow. Uh, That's sad. Yeah. yeah I mean, the it's just, it's not easy. It's anymore. not easy yet. The most. None of these technologies the are, but they're important. So, I mean, it's worth, it's worth it. I would love to yeah. be, I want encryption to be easy. I want it to be where I can just basically download an app. Yeah. If you should, want, but there's should not be. enough demand. So in the meantime, if you care about your privacy, you just have to work a little harder. I mean, security in general is is um, is is always difficult, and it's always a trade off with convenience. Yeah, and if yeah, it's easy for you, yeah. then it'll be for someone. Then it'll be easy for someone to uh, to break it. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I mean, PGP is pretty pretty annoying. Text secure is only on your phone. Um, PGP is extremely annoying. Like I can't get it on any other device apart from you know whatever I have the mail envelope plugin in. Right. And then if I want to encrypt it to multiple people, I just I have to select multiple people from this drop-down list. It's just yeah. Hmm. Well, isn't it from the seventies? And then um, is it? pigeon's actually know. pretty cool. OTR that would, pigeon. That lead I like that. It's easy. Once you have it okay. set up, it's yeah. just a regular chat, and you gotta, you, you gotta, it's pretty you secure. Gotta, um, if I'm doing it, you got to grab But it's still tough. Jump in. And it's like, speaking of... And then most of the time, you just go and talk to people on yeah. Facebook, so... Which always has something in the back of my mind, back thinking, oh, the NSA is reading this, oh, Facebook is reading this, oh. That's, that's my, I think we kinda, we kinda that's my default. I always kind of imagine that... You're coming back. No. You're not alone. Can you give me the cat? Just just roll him over. Oh, who's a Mau Mau? Yes, you <laughs> are. Yeah, that's her chair. You are such a Mau Mau. <gasps> oh, you're going to just... Accessory cat. There we go. Oh, still commercials. It's like a... We need a show clock, man. We need a show clock that shows like... At times, there's commercial breaks. I want to add a camera that's just on Ash the entire time. Oh, we'd get a lot more hits if we did that. <laughs> just get to Ash, like, looking up, like, what? Have you guys liked Ash the Studio Cat yet? On Facebook. On Facebook. <sighs> Ash has her own Facebook page. Yeah. Oh. yeah. It might be more popular than Shire Dude. Ash, this is not true. No. I have at least 100 more likes. She's catching up, though. Welcome back to the Rebel Love Show. We were just talking about encryption, but I think we're going to go in, in a completely different direction in this segment, Rob. Yeah. Yeah. I'm done with encryption. Go for it. Well, yes. So anyways, I'm done with encryption because I'm sad that it doesn't exist what I want to exist yet. Anyways, uh, so uh, Zach, th- this is where the show gets personal. I want to know, I want to know what your Tinder activism is like. My Tinder activism? <laughs> yes, your Tinder act. You're you're famous for being a Tinder activist, aren't, aren't you not? No, I, oh. I shouldn't be. Oh, I Is suck it? at Tinder. Oh, <laughs> okay. I, I thought you might uh, bring. More Although I have a friend who who seems to have figured out the right way to do it. That's and Neil, right? No, I I haven't talked to Neil about Tinder that much. Well, no, he mostly OK OK Q. No, Neil here is the OKC uh, god. I, I pay for OKC, so. Well, do you oh, really? He's an A-lister. Oh. Big yeah. Well, it's the only way you can sort by how by attractiveness. Yep. Yep. Oh man. And political views. How much? How much <laughs> coin did that cost you? Uh, sixty-nine dollars, I think. Was it worth it? Um. 
I've really only used a feature that allows me to see if my messages have been read. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to know, though. Right? I, don't, I don't know. It's I don't know. A, it's Is a it good service? I like to reward him, and I got to pay with Bitcoin. So, well, you have a. That's right. They do accept Bitcoin, right? Yeah. No. Okay, yeah. Cupid I, do accept Bitcoin. I did That's not, cool. I did not know that. I got to pay with Bitcoin because I'm going to do an A-lister thing uh, for a future project coming up. It, that is activism, but I, I won't talk well, about that Well, if it's yet. on camera, it's activism, right? Yeah, anything on camera is activism. Yeah, so you're getting activists right now. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Neil, you got, uh, you got recognized on OKC. Yeah, as having been from uh, the, the, the former podcast that I used to be co-host on. Uh, the one that shall not be named because it uh, will forever uh, mar any uh, bids for candidacy for public <laughs> office. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Um, you're probably on, you know, being associated with this will probably do the same thing at some okay. point now. All right. So now it doesn't even I've matter. accepted it. Oh, that's rough. Yeah. yeah. Hey, man, we're going to... this is a distinguished radio show. I, I do not think that <laughs> that would... You're, 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 you're sitting in a... Uh, a living room of an apartment in Manchester where it's a pirate radio station <laughs> going around the world. Not in Africa, though, right now. If you want to support that, uh, there's a, f uh, a GoFundMe to get us uh, back on the air in Africa. Is that at LRN.FM? Yes. Okay. Uh, there's a GoFundMe uh, Go satellite. Go fund yourself. <laughs> Go fund myself. Yeah. Yeah, that's how, I, that's how I got all this in here. Who doesn't like pirates? Right. I don't know. Who is, can, I, I like is anyone going to be the anti-pirate candidate? That's what I want to know. Sweden, the Swedish government hates pirates. Oh. Are you going to run on a pro-piracy campaign when you run for governor here, Neil? I'll run on a pro-secession campaign. Uh, I, thought it's an, I thought it was an independence campaign. <laughs> <laughs> he said the S word. Yeah, Ooh. that's a dirty word. You can't say uh, <laughs> secession. What are you talking? What I have, I don't support secession anymore. I, I am you a meant supporter. Recession. Of, oh, recession. Okay. Oh. You're pro-recession. Inevitably, candidate. that will result, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, if anything, the opposite. Um if anything, we'll be the next Hong Kong That's uh, with wow. some free trade. Yeah, we got a port. We got an international Carla, border. Carla, is that you? <laughs> What's that? I said, Carla, is that you? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, brothel. But yeah, what you are talking about is the foundation for New Hampshire independence, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we need to get that rolling more. Yeah. Yeah. I'm working on it, too. I I'm, I'm did, I did a couple phone calls. That's but as much as I did. I'm a slacktivist. Don't hate me. <laughs> I, I'm a, I'm a too much of a slacktivist. There are a sometime. lot of foundations in New Hampshire right now that are kind of like sleepy, but like you know, sleeping giants. I feel. Yeah. You know what I mean? Sleeper like, cells. <laughs> 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 Might not be the word I was looking <laughs> yeah, for. Yeah, it's not the exact. <laughs> but yeah, like phrase. the four four twenty foundation. I feel like you know we can get real big with that. I've been working on that a lot with Rich. Yeah. That's coming up. The rally's coming out. Are got, you guys going to be at the rally? Are you going to be You don't have to smoking. be smoking with us. You, you can just be there be in solidarity sporting. with other state reps I, and other uh, people. Maybe. I've been there in the past. It's, it's, it's certainly a, a great, great place turnout. to rub elbows, yeah. 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 <laughs> it's, a, it's a good networking. You can network a lot of people who are smoking pot in the state capitol. <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> Exchange really, business cards. I'm, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you never know who you'll meet there. Yeah. There'll be people all out of the woodwork. They'll come yeah. out and... You know, mingle and watch the state reps. I should, you know, a couple yeah, of them. I should do my due diligence too. If you're gonna go to the rally, you have gotta RSVP at tr. dot im slash four twenty. I gotta mention that. That's way too long. They need to trim that down. It's. <laughs> <laughs> uh. So, do we know like if there's gonna be other state reps like there were last year that were smoking on? The I would state love to have state reps smoking with me out on the. That the, it conquered, yeah, the state house lawn. We need to find out who they are. <laughs> we know state reps. We should like message them. You know, obviously we can't encrypt it because probably none of them actually use encryption. Yeah, um, but we should message them and be like, "Hey, are you going to be on there so we can advertise it that you're going to be there?" All Hillary Clinton needed to do was just use PGP. She didn't <laughs> need to run her own mail server. <laughs> <laughs> It's just so, so difficult to understand. So she just figured she'd start from the beginning and start her own server. I'm missing that. I, 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 I can't see her setting up a, a mail server and, and going through the whole... Maybe she had really good support. Yeah. Digital. <laughs> <laughs> Not GoDaddy. Um, but them. so I, I don't see why these uh, state reps can't use encryption. They should. Yeah, they probably should, but they don't. Well, I mean, they're only getting paid a hundred bucks, you, which you is should good. <laughs> they shouldn't be paid anything, but you know, at least that's, you know, 
They're not they're not hugely rich politicians, is what I'm trying to say. Well, every time you call up a state rep, you should just ask, you know, hey, is this? Uh, do you use red phone? Can we encrypt our conversation? Is this a secure oh, line? Uh, what's right. your yeah. secure line, sir? What's your, can is you this a secure line? <laughs> <laughs> it makes me think of like you know Star Trek from like uh, when they're like talking and something's going on. It's like, oh, is it is it secure on your end? You know, I can just imagine having that conversation with uh, state no, reps. It's it's never secure because that little uh, badge thing is uh, broadcasting the entire conversation. They're they're just. Uh, they're like those people that walk around in public, um, uh, you know, with their speakerphone on. You can hear their entire conversation. Right. <laughs> right. And and yet they they chastise you for listening in. Right. Well, encryption used to be something only for, for militaries and governments to use. So the concept that everybody should use encryption now is probably crazy to a lot of people. Yeah. Because you don't think that you have to use it, right? Like, I'm just, you know, talking to my mom on the phone. Why would I need to use encryption? But then the whole Snowden thing happened, and now just, you know, more and more people are starting to, you know, libertarian or not, are starting to think about the idea of, well, maybe I don't want someone in the middle to read what I'm, you know, saying, even if I'm not saying anything that I think is harmful or would be perceived as harmful by certain agents. Well, it's not just that, but if, like, if uh, men that we have never, men and women that we've never met uh, think they have some sort of authority over us, uh, and could use violence against us just for how we're talking to each other and can listen to everything we do. Everything everything that we do there is monitored. If they can do that, someone else could do it too that um, you know that may want to uh, do violence or, as well. So I definitely feel the need for encryption. I've been going on this encryption bandwagon in the last few weeks. The, my problem is that I am just not as tech-savvy as I could be. And, and technology is increasing so fast and like quality that and like uh you know you know what i mean we we're talking about this before the show right how it just gets uh more and more advanced as uh, time goes on it's right it's exponential yeah and there's a certain point where i'm just not going to be able to use technology effectively well if you can't use technology effectively now i can promise you it won't get any easier right <laughs> don't be a luddite man I, in my day job i handle people I, I handle like these like senior citizens coming in and using like a i've been thrust tender. into luddism I actually tender. i really hate talking on the phone like i feel like that's i actually feel like talking on the phone's out of date and oh i oh yeah i, I agree. definitely is right like cell phone towers and stuff i actually don't use that anymore like I hate no, old you're still using too. you're still using their towers just for data. TVs are old yeah. too. The whole, I mean, do you? There is not a TV in this uh, in apartment. The, in the apartment, yeah. In it's any way, shape, or form, it's there's, all virtual reality. There's literally three computer screens, <laughs> and there there's two laptops, and well, a laptop, a Chrome Chromebook, and another monitor, and that's it. Like that's I haven't watched an actual. The most TV I've actually seen since I've been here is when I would go to the Quill a lot and I would go to Skinny's to get like a slice of pizza and waiting for the pizza to be cooked, I'd watch their TV. That's it. That's like the TV like I've seen in the entire time. And it like sucks you in, right? It's, like you see the TV over there and oh, I remember this. TV's got an interesting ability to do that. I hate when I go to a restaurant or a bar and all I see is TV screens. Me too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like I, 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 I go it. there I to like, here to eat, not I, to be not just eat, but to socialize. And if there's a TV on, everyone just gets sucked yeah. into the corner. And Although and watch that it. does happen with phones as well. True, that's very true. It's happening right now. I'm looking at my phone. Stop it. So Quit rude. It. <laughs> More rudeness coming up. Coming up. On to me? Yep. Yeah. Oh, okay. They're they're all over it. Ah. Uh, got they got all the the sleuths everywhere, and yeah. The sleuths. You see this? It's all about Neil. We're not sleuths. The. Uh, uh, that's such a sleuthy. terrible word. Sleuth. Sleuth. We're not sleuthy. It's like um, knapsack. <laughs> <laughs> knapsack is cool. Knapsack. Oh no 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 no! If anything, say say rucksack. 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 Yeah, that's there. Da or or the das or the D. It's not D. I'm going for D. Oh, okay. Slava das so. No, you know why I hate the word nap uh, knapsack? Because it's not pronounced knap. Well, <laughs> could be one. Okay. But uh, feminine napkin. Yeah. 
um, and, and sack like, like a ball sack or something like that. I can, I can. It's just, it's like two, oh. you know, traditionally. It's like rock and scissors. It's pretty cool. Uh, uh, yeah, paper and wise. rock or whatever. Yeah, it's yeah. Tap connect within. Yeah, so no, it's just, it's just too yeah, inappropriate. Trying, trying to help you out. Dude. What's uh, a ruck? No. Is that some kind I don't of know what hey, hey, um, You're welcome. Hey, why aren't backpack, you guys using open garden, by the way? No. What? Do you guys use open garden? No. I why not? It, it, I I tried it. it wasn't it self-explanatory updated. for me. We're actually connected right now. You can see it. Yeah, Mesh Networks. I'm a fan guys. of open garden, actually. Um, the uh, Is it safe? The Altis. I, I don't know. It's it's sharing it's relaying your inter- internet information from device to device via Bluetooth, so I don't know. Okay, that but is. then I'm assuming someone else's internet traffic, and they could be um, looking at anything, which could expose me to. Um, I I wouldn't necessarily have plausible deniability, and even being put in a situation where I have to invoke that would be mm-hmm. like yeah, I, mean, I, don't think, I don't know uh, what they're I, think, I don't think Bluetooth is very secure at all. I think it's no Bluetooth isn't secure at all. Yeah. But I'm just thinking of like the sites that they visit, and then that being recorded on on your phone history, and then uh, uh, the network knows about it, and then like maybe it triggers. Maybe they're looking at um, you know illegal pornography or mm-hmm. s- something like that. I, I wouldn't want, want that. I wonder if just having Open Garden on your phone could be the plausible deniability, though. It'd be just to be like, oh yeah, well I have this. It, you know, could have been someone nearby or. Something like that. Sure, but then that presumes I'm in such a situation where such a defense is necessary. I'd rather not be placed in that. Yeah. At yeah. all. Well, you have to tell your uh, Tinder story. You have a Tinder story? I don't yes. have a Tinder story. Hey, well, your friend's uh, technique. Yeah, your friend oh, was, had oh, techniques. I've told, I've, you've heard that one, though, right? Yeah, but I haven't. The rest of the world hasn't. We can go back to that if you want. Well, it's it's basically the reverse way of doing it. So it would, Tinder, what the uh, the concept of Tinder is like? Okay, if I see someone that I find attractive, I will swipe right. If they're not attracted to me, I'll swipe left, and then hopefully someone will that I think is attractive will think I'm attractive as well. Mm-hmm. So what this guy did is he created a program that he runs overnight, and this and he's in New York City, so there are tons of people using Tinder. Yeah, and it swipes the program just swipes right on everyone. And then he wakes up <laughs> in the morning, and he has a selection of people that already like him. Well, they, supposedly. You know, they, some people will be drunk and swipe. But Yeah. Um, they just limited the yeah. swipes, though. The swipe oh, rights. they did? Yeah. yeah. So they ruined I'm, it for him. I'm no yeah. longer a Tinder activist because they don't charge you to swipe right. Like, what do you, you mean? They'll they'll you get, you get a finite amount swipes. of swipes. Yeah. And then right. you have to pay 20 bucks. Apparently, the older you are, the more expensive that gets. Oh, that's messed supposedly. up. Supposedly. Wow. Yeah. So ageist. I know. Oh, it's horrible. But, oh. like, I will fight Makes for the right wa- to be ageist. <laughs> Makes yeah. me want to lie about my age. Right. You'd, yeah, wouldn't people just lie at that point? Facebook. Right? When you have to lie on Facebook. It's connected first. to Facebook, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh, You have to create a whole other Facebook to do it. Or move over to uh, J-Swipe. <laughs> J-Swipe? J-Swipe. Yeah. What is Jay Swipe? Swipe? It's the Jewish Tinder. Oh. oh. Wow. Lots of Asian girls there, don't too. Oh. oh. On Jay Swipe? Is there an app for that? <laughs> yeah, that's what it's called. Jay Swipe. Oh, great. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess his. Uh, he's ruined. What? If he can't do that on uh, Tinder anymore. I don't know. His I don't, life I don't is really ruined now. That much anymore. I haven't really been using that Success much. Success rates have been extremely low. I haven't used dating apps all that much in the last. Uh, uh, I've maybe my standard. Since I've been in New high. Hampshire, <laughs> I checked out. Uh, <laughs> what was that? Although now that they're they're charging you for not having high standards. Right. Yeah. They're they're incentivizing you to have higher standards. I guess. Apparently. I bet you they charge men more. The market swipes. wins again. Oh, I'm sure they probably. I, I don't think they even. I I'll be willing to bet that women don't even have a charge. A charge, right? Yeah. We'll so they make that. twice as much, or a hundred percent as much on uh, the gay community within uh, Tinder. That's the case. That would make Actually, sense. I'm. I don't know. Maybe uh, okay. the maybe if you put gay on Tinder, maybe they don't even have a swipe limit. I don't know. Hmm. Honestly, Is don't know. Grinder owned by the same people who own Tinder. I don't no, believe so. so. No. Uh, Grinder was first, right? 
Grinder was first, but yeah. um, it's an absolutely terrible app. I'm like, uh, why? What's terrible it, about it? It is from loves it. like the design, the the user experience of it is um, like from 2011 or 2012, mm. um, and uh, it's just full of ads. Uh, oh, I like hate ads. Yeah. Not just ads at the bottom, but ads that pop up. Every time you try to back out of a window, it throws an ad in your face, and then you have to go back and forth and back and forth. That's terrible. No. Well, you don't spend a lot of time in the app. So they have to, just just like those lyric websites, if you go to a a site with uh, lyrics, you also see all these banner ads and stuff like that. It's because people are only for that site for one thing. Mm-hmm. People are only on Grinder for one thing, and so they're not going to spend a lot of time interacting with other elements, and so you can't get that much um, ad revenue or anything else from it or value-added services, so you have to barrage people with it all at once. Um, so, hmm. Hmm. Tinder is a nicely designed app, though. Or was. It's extremely simple. Before yeah. they destroyed it. I know. <laughs> that paywall. <sighs> Plenty of fish is popping in Manchester. Yeah, as of late it has been. I just got it on my phone actually, and it's plenty of what? Plenty, plenty of fish. Of fish. Hmm. Pof. dot com. Oh, I'm not a fan it's of like it, but that that is so 2008. It's, re- it's research. It's super old. It, it's research. I remember using Plenty of Fish like in 2008. That's that's MySpace to OK Cupid. Yeah. But yeah, it's no, popping it in is. Manchester. Yeah. <sighs> Why? You go where well, they maybe because Manchester is stuck in. Perhaps. What is Manchester stuck in? Uh Late, late 90s. 90s, yeah. I'd say late yep. 90s. We're bringing it, we're bringing it up, though. What did they have? <laughs> I, ho- I always love it how OG freestaters talk about the forums. <laughs> <laughs> the forums. The oh. forums. Oh, the forums. Back in the day when there were forums. NH Underground. Uh, you realize I never... Yeah, I never did that either. Yeah. Young whippersnappers. Welcome back to the Rebel Love Show, and uh, we're talking during the break about uh, a lot of different things. And one thing I want to point out, I didn't get to finish my thought, but one thing I want to point out is the fact that I am not one of these OG freestaters that praise, praise the forums, praise them. You know, back in the day when there used to be forums, everything was, you know, everyone was able to communicate easier and there was less drama, blah, blah, blah. Is that that even true? Uh, Yeah. Really? Well, not necessarily that there was less drama, but uh, I think there is something to be said about uh, communication in in today's Facebook age and that you're expected to be on Facebook. Otherwise, you're completely out of the loop when it comes to events or anything else. Uh, yeah. Forums, unless they were closed to be only seen by members, were, were pretty much open. And so anyone could go on there and, and see. Um, and, uh, yeah, there there was – I remember a Free State project before there was a YouTube. Um, and so with, like, uh, the original uh, Free Staters out in, like, Free Keen uh, – before there was a Free Keen, they were out in Keen. Uh, they were posting videos and them like burning social security cards and <laughs> all sorts of cool stuff. And these were like dot mov files hosted on a website that he had to download and wow, you couldn't just click on a YouTube link. That seems so archaic. Yeah. So as soon as YouTube came along, I threw them up there, and now they have like a hundred thousand views or something like that. But um, yeah, I know it's, it's you know it's it, like the dinosaur age. Right? YouTube's been around for a while though. What, 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 yeah, it has been. Like, but 2007? I want to say five. Earlier, no, earlier than 2005. 2004, maybe even. Yeah. Three. Something like that. Yeah. I remember I posting got some five, stuff on yeah. YouTube. and Yeah. Well, it's fascinating because we're talking about how, like, you know, technology is increasing so quickly and whatnot. And I, I find it funny that, like, you'll get these OG freestaters, like the, the council elders or whatever you want to call them. And uh, they'll start talking about the good old days with the forums. I'm like... I wasn't even around with during the forums. I've never been to one single free state forum. I've never seen, I, I think I've seen one like once just to look at it for a second, but I've never actually participated or I found this, all of this 
post forums. Like completely post forums. Well, we're here because of YouTube. Yeah. Because we saw the YouTube videos. Yeah, that's what got us here. Yeah. So it's fascinating when like this whole story, this whole history, you know, which is to me is just basically secondhand. Like, the, you know, people tell me stories about, like, what happened on the forums and, like, how information spread and stuff like that. And, like, all right, if you say so, like, that never happened in my realm of consciousness, you know. But at the same time, uh, you know, the, again, the rise of technology, like, where is this going to go next? How are we going to communicate? How is the Free State Project going to be communicating in 5, 10, 15 years from now? Like, us, all the, this community, you know. Like, where do you guys see that going? Um, semaphore. Aldous lamps, um, smoke signals. I mean, when, once <laughs> the uh, you know United Nations rolls their tanks in and brings down all the forms of communication, we're really going to have to revert to some older is forms. That, is that going to be before or Telegraphs after maybe. you run on a secession platform for governor? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I really hope that's not your plan, Neil. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I'm, uh, I don't think it's going to be uh, quite like that, but... Uh, um, but th- seriously though, guys, where do you guys, uh, what's your view on like the singularity and like the technology gains to a certain point? Cause I know both you guys are tech geeks and whatnot. Well, I think technology is moving at a, an exponential rate. And what that means is it's in a sense moving faster than we can really understand. So, I, I mean, I know there are a lot of people, I, I know Neil, when we talked about this a bunch, um, there are some people that think like, okay, the singularity is going to come and it's going to be something that's going to be very easy for us to kind of be part of, and then we'll just be superhuman beings and everything will be perfect. We'll just, you know, be way more intelligent and we'll have more tools to do, to deal with everything. And, and I kind of think that by the time that... Um, in a sense, technology catches up to us, or from an AI standpoint, catches up to us, it may be too late for us to help us, because if, say, AI gets to be as smart as human beings, then the day after that, they're way smarter than human beings. Yeah. And then where do you fit in? So, you know, how do you treat... You're in the Stephen Hawking's camp on AI. Well, I mean, I, I don't know exactly what's going to happen. I don't necessarily think it's going to be great for the way we see ourselves today. It's going to be completely different, and I don't know if that's going to be better or worse. I don't, you know, there's no, I don't think there's a reason necessarily to assume that it'll be, you know, better. Sometimes simpler is better for for us humans, and sometimes it's not. Would you say the uh, rise of technology that we have now in the last, say, 50 years, would you say that has improved humanity, or would you say it's been detrimental? I think it's improved. I think it's an amazing time we're living in, and I can't wait to see the future. Uh, that doesn't mean that he won't end up killing me. <laughs> <laughs> Man, what's what's transhumanism going to have on the it, like impact uh, the price of Bitcoin? <laughs> Where do you think the price of Bitcoin is going to go? Yeah, when, Bitcoin's going yeah, when the singularity like happens. Technology, but then, <laughs> uh, you, I remember when you guys used Bitcoin. <laughs> you know, there's going to be a post-Bitcoin there too at some point. Blockchains. A lot of ANCOVs talk, talk about like post-scarcity. And... I have a I have a huge problem with that. I know we're talking to Ancom Ancap briefly zeit, before the show. Yeah, a post scarcity world I I don't think can exist because time always exists, right? Mm-hmm. So time so, is always scarce. So then you're just going to sell Jesse dollars, right? Well, what if you can slow time down? Yeah. Right. Yeah. With tr- like, let's say with transhumanism, if we all become robot people, then I then guess time isn't as important. Right. Yeah. Everything's slowed down. Your perception of time is slowed down. Right, but it's not stopped. So there's still like, you know what, what I'm talking about. I mean, about? the universe at one point will probably, I mean, or Earth before the universe will at one point, you know, it would be uninhabitable. Um, unless, but that will take a very long time. Can solve mm. that problem, and I wouldn't worry about that. You'll probably just kill yourself right. before then, because there's, there's <laughs> absolutely no meaning to life. Well, wouldn't you? We're all going to launch ourselves into the sun, right? <laughs> well, I mean, I don't know if that's the best way to go, but. <laughs> I want to explode. I can't think of worse right now. I was talking about this the other day. I want to just <laughs> explode, like eat like a bunch of TNT, like a goat or something. No, no, no. You, you, should, you should explode <laughs> like they ex- execute people in North Korea just with like a, a mortar shell. No, nah, that's like outside it. Like I don't want to go from the inside out. So when I was in middle school, I had the <laughs> perfect solution to the problem of nuclear waste. And I, I've since found that nuclear waste is not a problem. We uh, For years, we can power existing nuclear plants 
off of existing nuclear waste. The environmentalists have it all wrong. But all you have to do is get convicts on death row to eat nuclear waste, <gasps> put them on a rocket, and launch them into the sun. So they're perfect containers. The reason why you put them into death row convicts is because, you know, the, the question is, well, why not just put the waste on the rocket and send it to the sun? Well, you have to have someone to jump out of the rocket with a parachute just in case the rocket blows up. Because, you know, you don't want the rocket to blow up in the Earth's atmosphere, you know, due to some malfunction. Just right. rain nuclear waste over everyone. So yeah. that's, there's so safety have to have precaution. The containers jump out and and use parachutes. I you really thought this through. Perfect plan. <laughs> I don't know why it wasn't wrong. adopted. <laughs> Wait, so there would there be something to like release the prisoners in case they're about to blow up? Well, they just know and they they jump out. They would just know because they. What <laughs> if they don't want to jump out? Yeah, we're like screw you. We're putting on death row. <laughs> I'm not a fan of the death penalty. Obviously, I don't think any of us. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I, yeah, I don't, Neil. I, it's yeah. kind of a black hole issue. People, I don't yeah, want to but get if into they're that. but they're on death row, so they're you know going to die. Uh, yeah, yeah. So like we're just working with what maybe we you have can ask now. them. It's like, listen, do you want to die by needle or <laughs> launched into space? Oh yeah, make it an option. Waste. There you go. Well, if I was going to go out, I'd be rather flown into the sun than there you go. kill the needle. That's what that I'll do like when I'm a, go. when I'm a cyborg and I just get like bored with everything else. I'm just going to fly into the sun. See, I don't think it's going to be like that. Like <laughs> we're not going to be like you know walking around like we're uh, like have like metal parts sticking out of us left and right. I think, I'd, well, I'd rather do that than try to upload my consciousness. Well, well, that's probably more of what it will be. I mean, what's the point of a body? What do you? What will you need the body for in the future? Yeah. It's just this just bag energy. of meat. And you don't believe in uploading your time? consciousness? Go to ShireDude.com. any Jesus. sexy fun time you'd like, though. <laughs> it's just there in front of you. Yeah, true. Or you have pods like in sleepers with Woody Allen. And we'll be or back with some more uh, uploading our consciousness. <laughs> Our consciousness. Right now. We're uploading our consciousness <laughs> right now. We're right now. It. it helps that there's a Did GMT you feel that? behind <laughs> us when I said that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we put up a thing on the screen. Uh, but yeah, you upload your consciousness every when, Okay, so wouldn't that be like cloning yourself, though? Like where Well, you, you don't really... It's not your consciousness that you upload. Yeah. Isn't it like a copy? It's not really you? That w- What's the difference? Because right now it can relay kind of, emotions his and ideas. isn't anywhere else. It's mm-hmm. only in him. If you if you were to take the uh, all the information that is currently in his brain and put it in another brain, so he'd be it having be all here. the exact right. Then they would both have his consciousness, and then it would you know you'd, he'd have to decide which is the real one because the other one would also believe that he's the real one. And right. then you could say, but look, you're on a robot body. Well, they're both real. Yeah. And then maybe he'd have to deal with it. Right, they're both real. See, I would want to make an infinite amount of copies once uh, of my consciousness once I upload it. So I can never be wiped out of uh, existence. Launch, launch one to the moon with the blockchain? Uh, I'd launch them everywhere. They go all over the universe. They, they, it would go into the multiverse, <laughs> and it would like impregnate every single universe but that's out there. Why are you maybe one of, the, one of the things about consciousness is it gets special. If there are like 20 of exactly me out there, well, what's the point of me? If you don't uh, feel like not there's adding a point anything of you, else, you, by be all the means, you. Get, yeah, be the greatest you. <laughs> you be greater than all the other yous out there. Yeah. But Each it's one only, of them would it have only that goal. depends on circumstance. It's they're all me. They're going to have the same... They, they're the exact same DNA as me. Well, at least con- they have the same information as me. So, I mean, it's hard to say. If you put if it into a robot, I won't have the same DNA I would decide as ahead of time, like, which one would be Shire Dude A, who'd be the dictator of all the other Shire Dudes... But then that you that was deciding, who would that be? You'd just be like the first robot that came out of the machine. Like, I'd just decide, okay, that's going to be Oh, it. so you'd brand them and, like, yeah. put numbers on their arms. Yeah. That's a great idea. They, we, Yeah, we'd have, like, little education camps we'd go through. No, wait. You ever mm-hmm. seen uh, The Adventures of Baron von Munchausen? Baron. Oh, it's an so, amazing movie. Yeah, Robin Williams plays this, you know, space oh, deity, Williams? right? Yeah, uh, I gotta the, watch that again. The floating head. So now I'm just envisioning everyone's like floating heads, multiple copies of it just flying just out throughout out. the universe. I remember you know, I like, watched that once when I was not feeling well, and it just sounded really stupid to me. 
<laughs> and I watched it, and I was blown away. And I'm like, wow. This is what drugs feel like. What Robin Williams I was movie like is not like amazing, right? You were um, like, "Wow, this is what drugs feel what, like." What's the, the one with the with right. the photo where he's a <laughs> photo lab technician? No, I, I was I would I did not horrible. actually think that. I was really I was a good boy. Yeah, was a good was horrible, boy. you don't remember because it was horrible. Ah. <laughs> that was this horrible movie. You asked the question. That's the answer. Okay. It was horrible. Photo lab technician Robin Williams movie. Is, yeah, is a horrible movie. Anyways, I want you to bring that up. Yeah. When we come back from the break, you need, yeah. to, you need to take turns come back from the break. Then we can go to the next topic right off of that. Right, this one? Yeah. The one right below that? Yeah. Okay. Sure. But don't don't tell them what it is. No, we can't. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's gonna be a total surprise. How's Ash doing? Oh, great. You see the animated GIF of the cat telling the dog to roll over? The dog rolls over? No. 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 That's cat, cool. The cat's like, with the his cat paw. figure it out? The cat figured it out, and the dog just did a barrel roll. Do a barrel roll. Do a barrel roll. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to the Rebel Up Show. I'm sure I do. Today next to me is Rob Mathias. We've also got Zach Harvey and Neil Connor in the studio. It's fantastic. Isn't it? It, it is really cool. Actually, uh, especially since I, I wanted to talk to you, Neil, about uh, you had some Soylent that you were looking to get rid Didn't of. Didn't you go full Soylent? Uh, yeah, I, I've gone full Soylent. Um, I don't know if that's equivalent to full retard, but uh, <laughs> I think it's somewhere between full manch and full key. So you soiled yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I've been fully soiled, yeah. Um, pretty much. I, I guess I have a burrito every now and then. Um, and when I get too lazy to clean the uh, the jar in which I have to mix the soilant, then I go out and eat. <laughs> <laughs> Because driving my car to the nearest burrito joint is less work than thinking about cleaning out the insides of a, a jug. Would you consider going to a Soylent bar? Um, is that an actual thing? Not yet. If, oh. if Doing I, market research. Someone needs to start that in Mansion except Bitcoin. Yeah. If I got to Hobnob with you know other Soylent elitists out there, yeah. Well, at first Talk they'd be elitists, then it would go mainstream, and you'd have Soylent... Soylent dive bars? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, there, man. There's Joylent out there, and they combine caffeine with their Joylent morning edition. It's like a Soylent knockoff or something. That's um, cool. So you could have caffeinated or drugged or maybe alcoholic Soylent. Or I'm all in favor of putting drugs in the Soylent. That's, that's what I'm, I'm going to do like right away with it is put like every kind of drug in there, caffeine, uh, p- marijuana, alcohol. I'm going to try it all. Spoilant. Spoil <laughs> <laughs> How long have you been full Soylent? Um, I've worked uh, my way through maybe about three months worth of Soylent now. How do you feel? Um, <laughs> I feel great. I take my vitamins and I have a burrito every other day. And Every other day or is it like once a week or something like that? No, pretty much every other day. Yeah. So one burrito, um, so every other day. Well, but I get dragged out, and you know I, I might have a right. meal prepared for me. But as far as um, breakfast and lunch, yeah, it's soylent. Wow, and espresso, <laughs> and espresso. Yeah. Okay, so so you really do feel as if food has become a lifestyle choice at this point, right? Yeah, I I hate the fact that to prepare food usually takes more time than to to consume it. Yeah. Um, and maybe it was because I was such a picky eater when I was a kid, but I always viewed eating as a chore. Uh, just even the act itself. Uh, now I can enjoy it, but um, you know, just just getting it out of the way. It's it's a biological necessity that I want to very easily overcome and decouple from when I enjoy food for food's sake. 
Okay, well, here's a question then. What have you, okay, so you took out food preparation out of your daily life for yeah. the most part. What are you doing with that time now? Mm, emails. Um, <laughs> building Ikea furniture. Well, you built it up as if, like, it's some sort of, like, the 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 um, the struggle is real in humanity because we have to cook food. And you got rid of that, that struggle. And you're like, oh, I, I email now. <laughs> Well, that, if you look would, at it as far as a work day is concerned, you have certain blocks of time that you want to work, and you want to get into a groove, and you, have to, you always have to think of what you have to do next. So it's you know, it's 10 a.m., I just had breakfast, okay, I have three hours till lunch, and then then you just always break the work into small See, pieces. But if you just say, okay, I have eight hours right now, and I'm go- you know, I have tons of things, I just want to do them and not think of anything, then in a lot of ways you can be a lot more efficient. So it, it, depending on if you like to take those breaks or don't, I mean, that's that's see, your choice. But it can be harrowing to think of lunch. All of, Like, what am I going to prepare now? What am I going you know, to have to prepare breakfast? I hate lunch, having to, s- dinner. Yeah, to stop to, to eat. Uh, I eat in the car all the time. It's because I, I don't want to have to stop to, to have a meal. See, I enjoy the act of eating. Mm. I enjoy having food. You know, I enjoy uh, making my own food. And yeah, but and every eating. day. I know. <laughs> no, a lot I of like times I'll make food and just like... Uh, no, I don't do that. Maybe I, I'll make food maybe once a day if I'm lucky. I, so I, I do the mono meal thing too a lot. Yeah, I'll make food mm-hmm. enough for like a, probably like three or four days at work. And then I'll pretty much eat the same thing for like a it's, week straight. It's well, that's just, well, just another way of, of, right, so you're preparing once for the rest of the week. That's yeah. just another, in a sense, replacement for Soylent because you don't mind doing it once uh, a week. But it's yeah. the concept yeah. is the same. How do I get rid of making lunch every single day or figuring out what I'm going to eat every single day? See, though, like for me, like the way you spoke about it, you spoke as if like you're very, very, um, uh, everything in your life's organized. All right. I don't know. That's how you sounded like when you came across with like how you think about how what, everything you have to do each day. I'm not like that at all. Like, don't get me wrong. I live and die by my calendar. I put like what's most important. But when it comes to like, I'll wake up and I'll look at the clock. I'm like, all right, I have to be at work. I have to be at my day job at 10. Um, it's now 7. For some reason, I'm up. Do I wake up and I make breakfast? Do I go for a run? Or do I just go back to sleep and kill much, as much time as I can until I have to jump in the shower? It, you know, it's also motivated by different work styles and requirements, too. I think, um, You know, when you work at a job that, in which you clock in and you have a lunch hour, and um, you can you can pretty much... Uh, leave that work except for maybe extra- extracurricular learning or research or stuff you can leave it within that time frame then um i mean that's great you you want to break from outside that and you don't really care what you're doing as long as you're maybe have time to yourself or pursuing your own interests but you know maybe there are other demands and maybe your schedule isn't set so there's there's kind of an impetus to always be available so say like i uh, i have a uh, you know, a customer that I'm having a a live chat with and, you know, I'm kind of waiting around while doing other things. I don't want to have to, you know, step away from the computer and then like go out and, you know, order food and wait on it. It's just so convenient to always have that recourse there. How long, Um, how long, nutrition. How long do you plan to be uh, soiling? You're going to do that forever? Yeah. Um, Until they come out with something better. Like Rocco's Modern Life, they had like little pills that you could, what's that? Stamps, eat stamps. And you just like put it on your. Tongue. We're not in the Soviet Union. Oh, <laughs> 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 well, kind kind of kind of like a little like food tab you just put on your tongue yeah. and it dissolves. Exactly. And you're That's like, it. Mm, broccoli. It's like, oh, today is Tuesday, right? <laughs> yeah. It's broccoli okay. soup and whatever, and you just. How does that fill you up? It's the future, Neil. <laughs> <laughs> what if, what if we just get the ability just to think that you know change something in our body, think that we're full. You know, and just like take a pill, and that's all the oh. minerals and solution that we need. And we can imagine whatever that could taste like. You know, every day we pop one pill, that'd be all the nutrients for an entire day. And it just, we can imagine that it tastes like a certain meal, and it does. That'd be awesome because that, yeah. would, that would imply that we know what nutrition is and what's needed for a body. But uh, I think that's such a shortcoming of this digital age. Uh, so much else is known, but ex- uh, except for a perfect diet, I have to admit, oh. I am um, I'm happy that you're pioneering. You're 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 walking the walk. He's our canary. He's a canary in the coal <laughs> mine. Yeah, I just hope yet yeah, to make it through. 
That's all. <laughs> I'm scared. I can't do it yet. I hope you make it because I would. I well, he's still eating a burrito every before. other day, so it should be fine. Their mole and gelato? No. That's good. They have those plates too. And, uh, I, I've mole. been. I mean, I, that may not appeal to you, but it's a, a plate is because like it's a, food? what happens when you take a burrito and you empty it on the plate. <laughs> oh. <laughs> have you guys been to G Spot? I don't even know what that is. What's that? Euro Spot. Oh. Right next to Karma. Oh. Yeah, I used to go there a bunch, but to be honest, I, I don't think they're. You don't like them? I don't think their ingredients are very high quality. Really? I don't no, think their I, meat I like is high quality. Oh, I get that. I'm, those, I'm, not, see, I'm one of those people where I'm not a huge fan of USA Chicken and Biscuit. I'm not either. At all. Though I do really... Well, I used to like Jay Dragon, which is now closed. Oh, really? Um, they closed it? Yeah, they closed. Uh, I do like Mint Bistro. I know Shire Dude doesn't. I'm not a fan. Oh, we should say this is a good... Good talk about food scene and match. The food scene and match. The food scene. I'm not a fan of Mint Bistro. Just I, I've had really, really good sushi back in California. It's a little spoiled. I'm See, to me. Oh, uh, so sushi. supposedly there's a really good sushi place in Portsmouth. I haven't been there. I've been. It's okay, but it's really <laughs> expensive. Which what do you? Which um, one was it called? Something with an O. It's, it's like the place. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I was there with Riaz. All right. Yeah. There are three. There are two excellent restaurants and one very good restaurant in Manchester that I, that I consider. And that's Republic and Campo. Mm-hmm. I haven't been to Campo. And then the Indian place is just a whole bucket of fun. Taj. Mm. Yeah, Taj, Taj India. Taj. That is just fun. It's a fun place. You know, cheap. And it's a it's a decent it's buffet. Yeah. yeah, no. At, well, at night they don't have actually a buffet. their buffet is is probably the worst. Yeah, you don't at like night, the buffet at part? night they're, it's their their entrees are really good. Part of it, if you go and get their just their regular meals, it'll be tastier. Really? Yes. I've never been at night, so even at lunch, you could they have cheaper lunches that aren't buffets. Oh, okay, okay. So it was just like a smaller portion, and oh. it's I guess ten bucks instead of fifteen or something, and hmm. and it's um uh, you. They're big portions anyway. You we can just walk there from here. We should do that one night. And they're they're really tasty. I'm really happy they exist. I've walked down the Taj before. But other than that, I think Republic is yeah, my favorite I've restaurant. Republic. You know, my co-worker's wife works at uh, that restaurant. Republic. Yeah. It's a really good place. I don't like their breakfast. What? They don't have bacon. I didn't know oh. they had breakfast. No, yeah. they have amazing omelets. Oh, really? I didn't yeah. care for their they're, breakfast. Uh, I've had their I've had their panini, which is amazing. First of all, like their ingredients are the best. They're all like local. Everything's like mm-hmm. locally raised, and all the vegetables are from the s- like the same day, basically. And then they have they're like smaller portions, but like everything they have, they're super fresh and really, really tasty. And their breakfasts aren't that expensive either. They're just a little smaller. You know, they're not like uh, if you guys want like a, a good breakfast place with big portions. Mm. There's Tucker's and Hooksit. Tucker's, yeah, Tucker's, Tucker's and Hooksit. And it is really tasty, also very high quality. Um, it's a mean breakfast. Hmm. I recommend it. Have you guys uh, tried, uh, now this is a hole in the wall, but have you guys tried Bagel Cafe? Yeah, oh, I yeah. have. Love Bagel it's Cafe. Great. Yeah. It is a like hole. You know, I like the way it's kind of like a nice. soup Nazi in there. Right. But <laughs> bagel Nazi. There's totally a bagel yeah. Nazi, yeah. Uh, yeah. But man, <laughs> it's good bagels. Yeah, and the, their cream cheese is like over the top, delicious. Like any cream cheese you get, doesn't really? matter. Yeah, they do their bacon and scallion really well. cream cheese is most places in New Hampshire do breakfast really well. I don't know. Yeah, better than where I'm from. Yeah, and they invented Denny's from where I'm from. True story. Denny's was invented from where you Lakewood, originated. California. Breakfast? Yeah, <laughs> is that your example of good breakfast? I guess that's just what I had. Yeah, Denny's. <laughs> all right. That's there's Denny's all over where I'm from here. Oh, I I miss a you know two a.m. Waffle House visit. Hmm. You can't have those up here. Back to the Rebel Love Show, and uh, Orc Fest is coming up, kids. 
it's in uh, Shire Year from now. I'm so excited, <laughs> man. <laughs> Me too. I can't wait. I'm living, I know Anne's living every day for it. I'm living every day just to get to Pork Fest. Like, that's that's my goal <laughs> is just get there is, at this point in time in my life. Is the Shire Year the time between a Liberty Forum and a Pork Fest? No, well, it's about it, right. because Liberty Forum was pushed back, it has nothing to do with the fact with Liberty Forum, um, though that kind of ties into it. It's more so, uh, I kind of view Shire Time to be kind of like rough for me. I, I, you would agree with this, right? Roughly I, three months? Three to four months. Depends. Depends it's, on what's going on. It depends on how hardcore you live in here in New Hampshire. Yeah. I mean, you can get <laughs> off, you can get with like a month and a half, two months, but it's really three to four months as a Shire year. You get like a life experience and down until like four in. months. It's yeah, packed. just pack down to that. At least we, we do anyways. I don't know about you guys. We, we, we're living Shire years in a couple months. Yeah. Paid anyway. for by the Free State Project. <laughs> oh, they didn't pay me jack shit, man. Where, where are you getting paid for by the FSP? They can advertise if they want on this show. The Coke Brothers. Only the Coke Brothers. Oh, the <laughs> Coke Brothers, yeah. Oh, man. Well, the, the Coke to Push can send us some uh, Bitcoin if they want to uh, donate to the cause. One guy accused Shire Dude of being uh, funded by George Soros, which I thought was really amusing. How like, would that work? Yeah. Um, I did an anti oh, oh, um, Scott Brown. <laughs> anti Scott Brown video. I just did randomly. It was like election season. I was just really fed up with uh, some Scott Brown stuff, and I uh, I made a little uh, like a Shire. It's kind of like a Shire dude video, not a Shire dude episode, but like a very Shire dude esque, really trippy. Yeah, you can look it up. It's uh, what was it called? I just look up Scott Brown Shire dude, and you'll find it. It'll be the first thing you pop. Isn't up. it on your YouTube channel? Yeah, it's on my YouTube channel. There you go. It's it's YouTube poop esque. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'd say Shire Dude uh, can be on the verge of YouTube poop at certain times. <laughs> it can be like you'd be watching and you'd be like, how did I get here? Like, what's, what is yeah. going on? Just that uneasy feeling in your stomach. There's so much on YouTube. Yeah. Well, it, like for Shire Dude, like if you, get watch, if you watch his episodes in progression. It makes sense. Yeah, it makes a lot more a, sense. A, it makes more sense. B, you got to be very intoxicated. I would say be really high or on shrooms. <laughs> or I don't know, whatever drug you want to do. But be intoxicated, and you start at the beginning, and you kind of see, like if you, when you're paying attention to it, you'll kind of see the uh, – you, you kind of like go along with him in his – like how trippy he gets – so I'm getting trippier as time goes on. Yeah, I actually, it, continue, it, it continues to get yeah. trippier. Yeah, it never ends. So like every episode just like expands. I desperately, on how it is. Uh, I want to do one of those guided uh, trip or like guided meditation videos where I like put on you know certain things that I like. And like just for people who are on you know the heavier drugs, mushrooms or something like that'd be interesting, right? To make a video for those people well, to you, watch. You, 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 you could are do, a shaman, so you right. could do Shire Dude ASMR. I would like love that. I love in ASMR. People's ears and and tickle them and and. Uh. <laughs> we got some <laughs> ASMR in the studio right now. Yeah, actually, I want to say Neil, I got ASMR from you. I had never heard of it before, and you did like a Facebook post about like an ASMR video that he liked, and uh, oh, but you didn't get it from me. Yeah, <laughs> you learned about it from me, but I didn't cause it in you. <laughs> what do you mean by get it from you? <laughs> yeah, like like got like the idea of it. What like, is I never ASMR? Heard of it. Oh, what's I'm a not even familiar for, for that. Autonomous, um, synchronous meridian response or something like that. Right. Um, it's basically the, the name for the tingles that go down the back of your head through your spine. Okay. Uh, and how, how is this accomplished with a YouTube video? Uh, people have oh, people buy these really sounds. Yeah, high quality microphones, and then they make all sorts of different sounds in front of the microphone to try to trigger you, to trigger your ASMR response. Oh. Yeah. It's great. Just look up ASMR on YouTube. It's hours and hours and hours of fun. They call themselves ASMR artists. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. How, ma how many of those artists are there out there? Yeah. Are, is there like a whole artist scene? Is there Are they bigger than like the liberty movement around the world? Is there more ASMR artists or whatnot than there are actual, you know, libertarians and anarchists in the, on the planet? Uh, if you lump in there ASMR aficionados, then perhaps they're equal. I don't know. Hasn't really got a lot of traction. Well, at least, well, yeah, just like this. Just yet. So. Yeah. <laughs> I remember I had a buddy, uh, Zach Foster, I want to say, was the person who made like a libertarian ASMR. <laughs> and he was just like whispering random stuff like, Murray Rothbard. <laughs> it was just like random. Like he was like reading passages about like. It was That'll do it. Strange. But hey, he's getting into that market. Good for him. We should see more of it.
Yeah, I would love to see more of that. Is that where uh, Shire Dude's going to be going soon? That'd be cool. It'd be cool to do some Shire Dude ASMR. I, I have a pretty good, like, microphone. I have the same microphone that, like, Stephanie Murphy and Derek J use uh, as far as, like, a condenser, like, a tabletop mic. Are you trying to say that they have better mics than this studio? Well, I'm just saying, like, I bought that mic, and I was like, oh, it's the same mic that Stephanie and Derek use. I'm a cool person now. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Like, I like your mics, too. I'm just, you know. Uh-huh. I want a mic like that's you know like a special one dedicated to other stuff. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. Don't you use a blue what, Yeti for something? Like yeah, that? yeah, yeah. The Yeti Is that by what Blue. Talking about? Yeah. Okay. I'm a fan of it. Yeah. No, it's a good one. That's only USB though. True. Oh. Well, aren't these all USB? No. No. These well, are not. XLR. The, there's XLR. this thing called. There's a mixer right. But they're hooked here, up to right the mixer, here. which is a USB mixer. So isn't that the same outcome? Yeah, but here's the thing. I'm not plugging in like Depends four the different quality USB of the digital analog converter. Yeah. Oh man, this is doing a lot. This is like the brain center of it. This is doing all the work. That went way over my head. We well, see. I can't use technology effectively anymore, guys. I can't do this. You Pretty don't know soon. about DAX? Yeah, nothing. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I don't <laughs> know. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, I had to teach all my, myself all this. I'm still learning. I feel like I'm just poking around in the dark with a sharp stick at this point. You know, we're doing better than most people, man. You listen to some uh, Liberty uh, um, content out there. Sometimes it's hard to listen to. And for that, not that this is even easier to listen to. But now, look at us. We're here. I'm going to uh, my own horn. We are the most visually appealing show coming out of the Shire, at least. Oh, yeah. Bar none. No, Multiple seriously. Multiple camera angles. We have a trippy screen behind us that's yeah. actually doing something right now. Oh, really? What's what's behind you? There's a DMT you. simulated trip going on right behind us as yeah. we speak. And we had a great way to test it out too. Um, we, uh, the co-host of Seditious Sirens, was on our way over here to record because they record in here too. And uh, we decided, you know what? Let's send. A, let's order some coffee. Oh <laughs> yeah! It's it's uh it's on. If you uh, are a fan of the show, go to Rebel. Lo- uh, go to uh, our Facebook page or what, what's the Rebel Love Club? It's, yeah, it's a group page on Facebook. It. It's called Rebel Love Club. It's like for all the insiders. Yeah. And uh, uh, Zach, we got to add you. I don't know if I think I might, I have, might have added him uh, in anticipation of him coming on the show. I try to do that. Yeah. So basically, yeah. every time there's a, a guest on, we add them, and any fans that want on, we add them too. So if you want to ask the guests a question you didn't get to during the show, you could always do that in the club afterwards. That makes so sense. it's like a Tinder for Rebel Love. Yeah, it's like our own <laughs> little. We we carved out a little tiny section of the internet and Facebook for just Rebel for Rebel Lovers, people who love this show. Yeah, and uh, I posted. So there's this hilarious video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically, uh, we post a video uh, testing out the green screen, uh, sending it to her wall, ordering. Well, I didn't order. Co- well, I ordered coffee, but you <laughs> built it up. It's really goofy. Uh, we yeah, we do like a fake like movie trailer thing, and I do an Arnold Schwarzenegger impression. It's pretty good. So you're you're staring at us with the green screen behind us, but, but it's seeing it. Oh, I, <laughs> I thought when you said you tested it. Yeah. Given that it was a DMT trip that you actually gave oh. someone DMT and you know <laughs> and then order coffee. In front of you. <laughs> How else would it Right. You you can't test it if it's Yeah, you got you got to lick that frog sometime. <laughs> see for yourself. Well, that's very true. Um <laughs> I've never done toad. Just throwing that out there. Don't don't all the it's, cool kids do toad. That's like the I did not inhale, but it's I've never done toad. I did not lick that amphibian. <laughs> <laughs> that amphibian. I did not lick that amphibian. I would love a politician to say that in the near future. The I actually I might run for office. I did not lick that And just salamander. constantly, constantly deny licking amphibians as I run for office. Well, you got to do that soon when you can uh Kind of seems like the Vermin Supreme would do. Yeah. Oh, I love him. I'm totally inspired by Vermin Supreme. He's a new one. He's I outweirded him at Porkfest. <gasps> we'll have to tell that story when we come back. Well, you can make it up. I, I doubt he remembers it either. Uh, maybe? I don't know. We did some campaign work for him at Liberty Forum. We took an Instagram photo with his uh, Bitcoin Q, uh, address in uh, the picture and h- holding up his... Supreme coin? Holding up, no. Holding up his uh, uh, bumper sticker. Written on a yellow notepad. 
and he was showing people it, asking for bitcoins. I I told him he should just print up the QR code and put it on the side of his boot, so every time someone takes a photo selfie. of him or a yeah. selfie with him, his mm -hmm. his uh QR code's right there. So if I see it on Instagram or Facebook, I can just boom some some Bitcoin. I, yeah, I actually set up the Bitcoin wallet for his uh, campaign. Is that a, has he really? already announced that he's running in 2016? Yeah, mm -hmm. he's he's going strong. All right. Yeah, he's got the bumper stickers, man. People organizing in every state. Is that a wise use of Bitcoin, by the way? Yes. Maybe, look, well, Vermin Supreme might actually, if, if his candidacy actually wins and he becomes the, uh, the supreme leader of the United States, Bitcoin could be uh, mainstream. What, what With Vermin ponies. Supreme is doing is With he's ponies and zombie-powered energy. And what's the tooth? Everybody has to uh, brush their teeth, right? Mandatory tooth brushing. Yeah. yeah. And free I mean, ponies. I don't care because I brush my teeth. <laughs> If you brush, they you came don't have anything to worry about. Yeah. <laughs> because I brush my teeth. <laughs> then they came. The secret dental to police. Report in. Then they gave everyone ponies. And I shut up. <laughs> and I stood silent because I wanted a pony. <laughs> <laughs> but then they came from Bitcoins. And there was no one left <laughs> to Bitcoin. Oh, man. Oh, look at that mouth mouth. I do agree that we're one of the, uh, we are the most visual show. Visually appealing. Visually Granted, appealing. we are maxing out a CPU right yeah, now. Yeah, com this computer is like, can barely handle what we we're doing. We're too hot for the computer. Yeah. I'm hoping it's not too laggy in the recording. I haven't watched you guys. Don't worry. Uh, that's okay. Yeah. Any questions for the this, guests? This content isn't for segment. people that live here. I don't really pay attention to any Liberty content that much anymore in the Shire or just content in general. Hell, I don't even watch TV anymore. Though I have been binging on Game of Thrones the last uh, oh, Game of Thrones few is weeks. Awesome. I just got to the... I, oh, you've seen like Breaking Bad and stuff, right? I've seen all of Breaking Bad. And Better Call Saul? I'm slowly watching that. I love Better Call Saul. I just caught up on it today. You no, know it's crazy. Anne has never seen Breaking Bad. But she's, watching Better, and she's watching Better Call Saul. And I told her, you cannot watch Breaking Bad until you finish Breaking Bad. Uh, I told her it's Better a terrible idea. She's missing what? A no, stuff. you got to watch no. Breaking Bad. No. Watch Breaking Bad. No, no, all she's the doing way. it reverse. I'm watching the Star Wars <laughs> movies. Remember yeah. They scar it's her for funny. life. You don't know what you're doing. And she doing. likes it. You're changing. What is this, like, relationship? Like uh, you know, Nobody. like is she now like a battered wife because she's watching that? Morty or Marty? Way. Oh, well, Which, Morty is uh, is Rick and Morty. Rick and Morty, that's also oh. awesome. Obviously, they've taken some bit from uh, right. Back to the Future. You see the uh, the original pilot for Rick and Morty? No, but I love. Is it back for a second season yet? No, I I looked at that and it's only it's like a year from now they come back for a second season. It was really good. I I watched that in like a day. Yeah, and it consumed mm -hmm. all of it. It was so amazing. I loved it. <laughs> the is the, the pilot was like <laughs> that's funny. Rated R or X or something. Oh really? Yeah. It was. Uh, it was. It was like not arable on TV. <sighs> oh yeah, the computer's definitely the problem. Welcome back to the Rebel Love Show. And uh, before we hit the break, Zach here was telling us how he would do weirded out, uh, out weirded, out weirded. Out -weirded. My apologies. <laughs> At Porkfest, no less. Was this this past year's Porkfest or the previous year's? I think it was this. It was the past one. Okay. It was it was, was this was this party. when? Well, there's a kid, big gay dance party every Porkfest. Right, but I'm. Oh well, the cool one coming up is the last big gay dance party. No, the last one that Buzz is doing. It's gonna con con uh, continue on. Someone, Someone else will carry the, the torch. Mantle. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe not. Maybe. Maybe you can't. Now, was this before or after uh, Vermin Supreme went on a huge tirade about how he was starving because he had no Dogecoin to buy a hot dog? He was yelling about that. Yeah, I didn't, I yeah there's that a YouTube completely. video out there of Dogefest where um, I don't know if you're aware, but almost all of the vendors at uh, uh, Inagora Valley, all, all of them just started taking Dogecoin. And most of them didn't even take Bitcoin. Every other currency became worthless. I starved for like half of a pork fest because I refused to use that that shitty currency. 
<laughs> yeah, and apparently uh, Vermin Supreme had a tirade because he couldn't even get, get buy a hot dog. Or bacon, yeah, nothing. Or bacon, yeah. 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 So <laughs> Anyways, how, how you, you outweirded uh, Vermin Supreme. So um, at the Big Gay Dance Party at Porkfest, there was a balloon expert. And, you know, some ex- some of these balloonists, what are they called? Balloon artists? And, Balloons. you know, they make like little doggies for kids or uh, little hats, like Indian hats, etc. Uh, but it was the big gay dance party, so obviously they were phallic in their nature. And <laughs> so you have all these big penis balloons and people are dancing with them. And I had one of them and I was dancing um, opposite from Vermin Supreme. And it was fun for a while until at one point he's like, no, 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 that's too much for me. <laughs> <laughs> and wow. I believe it may have been caught on camera. What, and I was like, I just weirded out Vermin Supreme. What was the... I uh, won. Was the penis balloon, was it on his, <laughs> what is it, was it on his boot or did he take his it wasn't, boot off? No, it was on me, I believe. Oh, <laughs> you, you were, okay. I was dancing opposite from him. So you're dancing... We're, and now, I think he is just too much for him. What else were you wearing? Was it just that, or was it just that? I wasn't wearing anything weird. Oh, so, it so was just it, my dance moves and well, the penis balloon. <laughs> so it's just a penis balloon. So there you are, just dancing with just a penis balloon next to Vermin Supreme, and you outweirded him. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. I think it was a, a, a vagina balloon, mm. and maybe he had one of them. <laughs> <laughs> That would be weird, yeah. How many uh, pork fests have uh, you gone to? But, but that's what pa- pork fest is all about. Yeah. Right. Getting weird. Um, three. Three. I've been to three. 2012, 13, 14. So you know how to strategize now for pork fest. You're like, you know like what to do. No, every year I become more clueless. <laughs> I mean, I think it changes in a lot of ways. Um, yeah. I think my best one was probably 2013. Why do you say that? Um. Well, there was a ton of Bitcoin stuff going on and lots of people from the Bitcoin community. And it was like the first year where you could get everything with Bitcoin. And 2014 almost seemed like there was less. It regressed. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I think 2013 was like for me, I was, you know, I haven't been to, I heard 2011 was great. Um, but for me, I think 2013 was the best pork fest. Do you have high hopes for 2015? Um, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Who's organizing it? Uh, what's her name? Kristen Witzel? Witzel? Oh, yeah. 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 Hopefully the vendors learn their she lesson. Knows, yeah, She knows Bitcoin. what she's doing. It's, yeah, she seems confident. She, she, I think she knows parties. At this point, for me, it's all a blur. Um, this is going to be my 10th pork fest. Whoa. Damn, son. Yeah. You are an OG free stater. <laughs> oh, okay. Like I will OG. say one Old thing. Gar? Gold? Garden. I think 2014 was a little bit too much family oriented. Mm. 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 How was that? What, well, just, are, are you was, talking uh, about like the family oriented between all the? Uh, you know, it's just like uh, there was like too much going on about we have to make sure that it's suitable for kids, kind of thing. With people with more conservative uh, ideas of what Porkfest should look like. Was that when Porkfest is well, it's one big party. Was that in between the industrial party? Or was that in between that and the big gay dance party or the fact that people well, it, walk I, around like mostly naked with mm-hmm. like, you know, blunts and uh, joints and open Well, I think that they rifles. weren't necessarily happy about all of the, like the organizers may not have been happy about all those things and were trying to tone it down. Whereas in earlier years, there was less of that going on. So it was a little bit more wild. Hmm. But uh, maybe it'll get wild again this year. Uh, but Neil Neil has more experience. Prior to that, though, it was quaint. Really? Yeah. I mean, um, when was the first year where it got like crazy? I would say once it moved back to Rogers Campground a couple years later. Uh, yeah. So maybe around 2000, uh, 2012, the Curtis years. Uh, <laughs> it got pretty crazy. But yeah, my... First one was in uh, 06, and that was at Rogers Campground, and it was a small, tightly knit um, group. And I had only known about uh, most of the people there. It was my first time up from, like, forum posts and videos and things like that. Like, oh, you were the ones who burnt your Social Security cards or held a snowball raid against the Fed building. and <laughs> um, they, they were, like, free state or in my mind. 
the um, celebritarians. Yeah, and the uh, the most wild part of like the next couple of years was uh, Jason Osborne's fun tent, where he would just give uh, alcohol away. Um, but it was on a, uh, a f- Porkfest moved to a federal owned land. I heard about that. Yeah, it was like made by the Works Progress Administration during uh, what was the FDR's years. So I wouldn't say hypocritical, but just very kind of ironic in that, in that regard. And now I can say, I remember a time in Pork, uh, uh, Pork Fest where I had to walk 10 miles uphill to get to the registration booth. That place was strung out um, to where to get from the campfire to the registration booth, you had to walk a mile uphill and downhill. Oh, that's gross. Yeah. Yeah. So this last board fest, the uh, a lot of people were saying that the market for um, psychedelics was totally saturated, and for some reason, like everyone just thought to bring psychedelics to Pork Fest and sell them. What what's going to be the the market this coming Pork Fest? Any predictions? I'm thinking like breast milk. We have ice to create cream a bet market or like oh. <laughs> a, Bit market? Bet market. A bet market. Got to put in bets. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Maybe that'll be the market. What kind of bets? (laughs) Well, what will be the price of um, psychedelics at Porkfest on day one, day two, etc.? Put your money where your mouth is. Do you think it's going to be above market price or below market price? Do you think that the the uh, organizers, if someone just started openly selling like advertising with a big sign like "drugs here," we accept Bitcoin. You, you think shut them down or <laughs> <laughs> let just let them uh, do their thing? Because obviously um, everything I think is there's done. There's a fair chance that they'd intervene or interfere. Yeah, organizers would shut them down, uh, hands down. I, I don't doubt that for a second. Why don't you just well, they could say saying drugs. They can just say love or happiness or something along those lines here. Then that's yeah, that's easier. Yeah, someone should do that. <laughs> <laughs> See what happens. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking forward to pork fest. Just have a vending machine that sells happiness and love. There you go. There you go. Isn't Everybody wants some in opaque containers. <laughs> huh? <laughs> yeah. Um. But I'm. I can't wait for pork fest. I love pork fest. I was like, uh, I find it to be like a uh, spiritual uh, retreat once mm-hmm. a year, and I um. I can't look forward n- enough to it. Yep. I'm literally living every day until I get to Pork Fest right now. Um, it's always in my back of my mind for like the last uh, since the beginning of this year. Uh, anyways, we're coming near the end. Uh, Neil, where can people find you at? Uh, well, I, I don't give out my residential address. <laughs> <laughs> Very but good. So you give out your private keys to like your encryption, right? Is that what you do instead? Uh, no, you can find me at neilconnor.com. Well, you have your own website. I didn't yeah. even know that. That's yeah. cool. But you have to spell it right. There's 16 different perturbations of my name. Well, if you f- if you if you type it in correctly, you might just find them. And uh, Zach, where can uh, people find you at? Uh, online. Online. I guess on Facebook. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I, mean, I don't know, man. I don't know if you want to pimp your brand or your business or anything like that. Meh. Meh. We're cool. <laughs> <laughs> He's too cool for you, man. Okay. What about you, Shire Dude? Hey guys, it's all at shiredude.com. What else? Everything. That's that's all. It's all that's there. It. That's that's the whole kitten caboodle. Yeah, that's everything. Okay. You go there, you got everything. That's true. Yeah. You do have a lot there. Uh, you can find me at therebel.com, which I never update. Uh, come back to this and uh, go to rebelloveshow.com. Uh, we'll have that fixed soon. And uh, of course, go like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on uh, iTunes. Stitcher, we're out guys. Peace.